Oh yes, the time has come to say goodbye to my longtime friend and ally, the Canon M50, and embrace the future. The Canon EOS R. And by future, I mean two years ago. Okay, so first of all, the Canon M50. This has been what has been in my bag, and I've been shooting with nonstop for the past six, seven, eight months. And the crazy thing is, I could have picked any camera, like not any camera, but like any full-frame mirrorless DSLR camera. I, I had the resources to be able to get any of them, and the one that I chose was a $700 Canon mirrorless that was panned by everyone, including myself, when it came out. And it's just funny how the world works, but you don't buy the best camera spec-wise. You buy the camera that works best for you. And for some reason, it was the M50 because I needed a flip screen and I needed good autofocus and I needed a microphone input. And the, it was like the only option. It was like this or, I mean, I could get like an SL2 or a T7i or even a 60 Mark II. But, you know, the video quality coming out of this at 1080p is awesome. Low light, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but you know, with a good lens, you can shoot some really wild, cinematic, good looking stuff. And for vlogging, you just like, you can't complain when your vlogging lens is this big, especially when you look the 16 to 35 f4 in the face and it's like a thousand times bigger. But the M50 did so much and was such insane, wild value and again could have had anything i went with the m50 and it, and it was a, it was a great tool so why upgrade to the eos r and why in the world would i pick the eos r when there's so many other crazy wild options out there like you know there's a new nikons and there's great panasonics and there's the sony a7 III, which is kind of crushing right now well some of it comes back to what i loved about this and then trying to fix some of the limitations that I ran into with this camera. And so, you know, again, what I need personally is very different than what other people need. If you are the person who doesn't go in front of the camera and does not need that selfie screen to be able to see yourself, which saves me a ton of time, then buy a Sony a7 III. That's what I would buy. If I was behind the camera, I'd buy an a7 III. I mean, you got full frame 4K, you got 120 frames per second. The color science in it is better. It's got the in-body image stabilization. There are so many great things. But for me, not having a selfie screen is just like, it's a non-starter. I had the a6500 before uh, this camera, and I tried putting a monitor on top, and then I broke like four HDMI cords from like setting it down on the end of the HDMI cords, and it was so big and clunky and heavy, and the battery life already wasn't good, and then running the monitor made the, it just like it didn't feel good in the hands, and flipping the screen around, it, it was it was just, it was a pain. It was a, it was a giant pain to have the selfie screen on top, just did not work for me. I did not want that. And for me, I'm not shooting serious cinematics all the time. You know, shoot for Justin and Greg, and it's more of a, a comedy, fun, you know, kind of weird, wacky adventure style vlog stuff. And it doesn't need 120 frames per second. It does not need to be in 4K all the time. So that is something that is unique to me. But, you know, if I was putting on more of my cinematic muscles, which I can do if I want to, I'm not the best in the world. Yeah, I'd probably go with the Sony a7 III, although I will say the glass gets very expensive where you have more options for Canon, but that, that's really a side note. But for my specific needs, the M50 did almost everything I needed to do, except there were a few things where it could screw me over. And the problem I have here is I'm a professional, meaning that I make videos for a living, and so... There are certain things where there are limitations of this that make it look and feel unprofessional or can cause serious issues. One of them that kind of bugged me the most was the low light performance on the M50. Is The picture looked amazing to like ISO 1600. And then once you started rolling over that, the picture just kind of like falls apart. It gets super grainy, it gets gross, the colors are mushy, the sharpness kind of all goes. And there are situations you get into where you're in low light situations. And I don't like when the video just really does not look good in those situations. So, you know, that was one. Another one that it isn't a huge thing, but you could kind of hear it is if I was using a mic like this Rode Video Micro, which paired up really well with the size of this, the preamp on this was like eh, 
better, but kind of okay. And so you get some hiss and some noise at some times, which, you know, I maybe didn't love. Another feature that would be very easy for them to fix, but isn't possible, is to have the audio levels on the selfie screen so that when you, you're you filming yourself, you can check every once in a while and make sure that your microphone is still working and recording. And there were times where I made some videos where we lost sound because the cable crapped out or something something went wrong with the microphone, and you couldn't see that. And when you're working in a professional environment, that just cannot happen. I got in the habit of constantly, you can flip to a different info screen where you can't see the video, and you can just make sure the audio levels are there, you're checking every once in a while, but it helps when you're able to see that on the screen. And that's not a whole lot of things. Like Otherwise, this thing is amazing. And I think if you are just you know casual or semi-professional or you do it on the sides, the M50 is a fantastic tool. And especially considering when it is like $650 or $700 for a body, whereas this is $2,300 US for the body. Now, for me, it's worth it because it basically does what this does, which I loved and just does it better. You know, better low-light performance, the codecs are better, so you get a little bit better video quality. It can shoot in Canon Log, which honestly, when you're vlogging, can be handy because you've got a lot of, like, you know, situations that are less than ideal. Some limitations about that. We'll talk about that in a second. And, you know, it's got the headphone jack, which can be handy. It shows the audio levels on the screen. The autofocus is wild and amazing, and the autofocus actually works in 4K, which is still crap, but it's another thing we'll talk a little bit more about the specs. But it basically took everything that the M50 does and makes it better. Plus, for me, I started off in photography and had like full frame photo gear, and I loved it. And then went to Panasonic, which is a, a big crop, and then came back to Sony, which is less of a crop, and then Canon, which is mm, still a little bit more of a crop. But having full frame photos, it looks fantastic. Like, fantastic. Um, so, you know, it kind of specifically for me, it made sense. I don't think I would recommend this camera to anybody other than a very serious creator who did not care that much about super cinematic slow motion video or needed to do 4K. But if you're somebody like, I like taking photos and I like making videos and I don't want to have to think about it too much. Like I'm not like a super tech video, you know, nerd, like enthusiast cinematographer. I'm just like, I'm a creator. I think it's the best all-around creation tool on the market today for people who need to be in front of the camera. It just, it is. Now, if Sony would just give us a selfie screen, we're in a completely different conversation. And as upset as people are at this camera for the limitations it has, I get the same level of upset at Sony because I love what Sony is doing, but the lack of the flip-out screen is killing me And Panasonic, you're killing me by not giving us great video autofocus. And so this this kind of, it it checks the boxes for me. Now, I am not going to sit here and defend this camera's price. It is absolutely overpriced for what it is because I think it's reasonably priced in Canon's lineup if you didn't think of anybody else. It kind of sits between the 6D Mark II and the 5D Mark IV. And I think it's priced kind of in between those two cameras and that's maybe how they look at it. But when you look on a spec sheet and you see that, hey, this does 1080p at 60 frames per second. It does 4K with a 1.7 crop. It doesn't have in-body image stabilization. You know, it's it's got 10-bit external, but no 10-bit internal, which, you know, it, it's fine. Um, and then some, like, really weird limitations. Like, if you throw a Canon crop sensor lens on it, you can only shoot up to 30 frames per second. You can't shoot at 60 frames per second in the crop mode. Um, the Canon log only works in manual mode with all of your things set manually. You can't turn on auto ISO. You can't use the new aperture or shutter priority modes with Canon log. Like, there's, there's a lot of things about it that are just like, really, guys? Like, really, this wouldn't have been hard to figure out. And all of that for $2,300. Meanwhile, you can get an A7 III for $2,000 that does 1080, 120 frames per second, that does 4K full frame, that has in-body image stabilization, that, you know, it has those S-log and, like, pretty much every mode that there, you know, it, it maybe doesn't make as much sense. But for me, it makes sense. Because I want that selfie screen. I want full frame photos. I'm fine with 1080p. 
Um, I guess I'll let the lenses do the image stabilization because you have to. The e-stabilization, eh, it's okay. I've, I've used it on the M50. It, it, it helps at times, but you want to get image stabilized lenses. It's, it's chunky and it's kind of heavy, but boy, does it feel nice in the hands, especially for photos. Like it feels really, really secure. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to dig into it. I only got it a couple of days ago. I haven't spent a ton of time with it. I've taken a few photos and the photos look great. I've done some low light comparisons again between these two cameras, which is for me when I'm comparing against, I know that it's not as good as a Sony a7 III in low light, but I wasn't looking for that. I was just looking for better than this. And when you put them side by side, looks great. The 4K coming out of it, I have the six, Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter, which is crop sensor lens. When that goes on the camera, the 4K at you know f1.8 on the zoom lens, it looks it looks awesome. And I would say the 4K out of these two cameras looks very very similar. Like they're both incredibly sharp. Um, if you shoot in Canon log and you leave the sharpness all the way down, it's very soft. And people complain about Canon being soft. And for me, it's like guys, just sharpen the image. Like you can't unsharpen. Really, I mean, you kind of can, but it doesn't work to unsharpen a sharp image. But you can always typically take a soft image and sharpen it. So when I shoot the Canon log in here, I just turn the sharpness up and uh, looks looks great. Other than the 4K on this ends up being like a 2.3 crop factor or somewhere around there, whereas this is a 1.7 crop factor. So you're going to get more background blur. It's, it's going to be great. And okay, you can go pee. Yeah, go pee. So yeah, I'm I'm curious to try it out and see what happens i'm <sighs> i'll be honest um i've never been less excited for such an expensive camera because it's a lot of money for what it does and it doesn't give me really anything that is new and exciting over the m50 other than full frame, which is nice because it's a blurry backgrounds and, and has the full frame look, which is awesome. But other than that, there's, it, it's better. Like, it's just like, it's, it's better. It's just like an iterative upgrade, but there, there is nothing new and shiny that I get excited about, but it's going to focus great. The audio is going to be great. The 1080p quality is going to be great. It's going to look great with the colors. Like it, it's going to, it's going to work great. So yeah. That's that's my excited initial review.